Alrighty, we have a great group with us tonight. Elijah, would you yeah. open us up? Would you open us up in prayer? Absolutely. Would you all join me in prayer, please? Creator God, we come before you in the name of Jesus, thanking you for an opportunity and a space to learn more about Wesley and uh, a space for each and every other person here to do the same um, as we go through tonight and as we um, continue to discern um, and look at what education and seminary looks like for us. Um, may your Holy Spirit um, be present, abide in us, and guide us every step of the way. Uh, it is in Jesus' name that we do pray and say thank you for this evening and this opportunity, Lord. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we are so glad that all of you could join us tonight for the webinar crash course and online classes. Um, I'm just going to give you a brief overview of what we'll talk about today um, in hopefully the next 20 to 30 minutes. Hopefully we can get you out of here so you can all go back to enjoying dinner and whatnot. Um, but I wanted to start uh, with a brief overview. So Elijah is going to start us off with um, why online, why Wesley is, has started to incorporate online classes, um, and why we're incorporating even more online classes. Uh, we're all online this summer. Um, then I'm going to walk you through my Blackboard page so that all of you can see exactly what Blackboard looks like. Um, I'll take you into one of my classes, and then I can show, I can break down the different components of what an online class looks like in Blackboard. All of you will get a Blackboard ID, so you will all become Blackboard pros over your time at Wesley. Uh, and then finally, we'll turn it over to our IT Blackboard guru expert, Berkeley Collins. Uh, we are so glad that Berkeley could join us tonight. So if you have any other questions about online classes, um, tech requirements, really anything else online you can think of, Berkeley is here to answer that. Um, she is the sage of all things online in really the history is. of online yes she really is. <laughs> and now i'm realizing i didn't introduce myself uh so i am liz krunicki i'm a recruiter in the office of admissions and i am a very recent grad of wesley i graduated on monday <laughs> wow. with my master of theological studies so you can do it too <laughs> <laughs> in a few short years, you also can have your amazing MTS diploma in hand. I don't have it in hand yet. It's in the mail, but I'll have it in hand. <laughs> and my name is Elijah Farabee. I'm also a recruiter for uh, Wesley with Liz. I'm a 2019 MDiv grad, and um, I just love webinars. You know, I think they're my new favorite thing. You know, they're in the evening. It's great to new meet new people and new faces and some familiar faces. Um, so welcome this evening. And hi guys, I'm gonna go ahead and just, I'm sorry, I'm gonna step on you guys. I just wanted to introduce myself as well. Um, as Elijah and Liz mentioned, I am the Director of Educational Technology here at Wesley. I am the Blackboard Administrator, and then I'm also the Instructional Designer. So I work with all of the faculty on creating and transitioning their courses online. Um, and I just, I just wanted to let you guys know something before we get started, and I think Elijah will probably go into this. So. Over the past five years, we have been getting ready for this unintentionally. We have been shoring up our infrastructure on campus. We have been updating our learning management system. Um, hopefully none of you guys are uh, being affected by what happened at Fairfax Public Schools, but that's not us. So we've been getting ready for this. We've also trained um, the majority of our instructors, both adjunct and full-time faculty, in how to teach online and how to design online courses. Um, we recently have transitioned from a software called Panopto, a video software, to Kaltura. Kaltura is a little bit better known and it's very strong. We've, all, we've trained all of our faculty on it already. So we, we were ready for this. When it came, we transitioned very seamlessly. And so Elijah's probably gonna go into it a little bit more, but we are going online because we have to, but we're also completely ready. And um, we've, we've been moving in that direction anyway, not fully online, but just preparing and, and making sure that um, we can offer our students what they want and what they need in in all of the different methods. So, sorry, Elijah, please go ahead. No, no, you're totally fine. So, really, just to echo what what Berkeley said so eloquently, and just with so many great terminologies that I don't know. Um, 
um, on the recruitment side of it, uh, the reason we've decided to become more online as an institution is because we are looking to make sure that we can cater to the needs of our student body at all of our degree levels. Um, as you know, with the tide in turn of, you know, I guess the 21st century, whatever may have you, a lot of things um, have become more online and um, people are seeking to have digital access to those things. So with the help of Berkeley and probably the leadership of Berkeley and a push from a lot of our um, staff and administration, our faculty have um, bit the bullet and decided to go online. It was not an easy fight, but know that we have um, definitely turned it so that people can, you know, do things like work jobs and travel and, um, uh, and adhere to the other commitments that they have while also being um, simultaneously enrolled in class. Because a large percentage of our student body are commuter and second career students who are sometimes local and sometimes distance. And having an online um, learning opportunity really does help them um, in being able to accomplish the goals that they're setting as far as seminary academic um, achievement and academic completion. Um, so in a nutshell, that's really why we've done it. Um, like Liz said, and like Berkeley both have both said, we are not entirely online at this point. I don't really think seminary will ever be, at least for us, an entirely online experience because of all that it entails. But it does make for, um, it makes for the journey to be a little easier for people, but also moving into the different types of ministries that people will go into, you will have components of online work, online sermons, online requirements, regardless of your denomination. And for some who have never had this type of experience um, in any type of setting, you know, academically speaking, having an online class helps them to learn not only how to do so, but also how to incorporate it in their own ministry and um, work settings as well too. Um, so I'd say in a nutshell, that's pretty much the reason why we decided to just, you know, switch it over pretty much like every other academic institution as of right now. Um, it's the way to go. It's the, <laughs> the uh, cliche term way of the future. Um, but it also keeps us in connection with, with our students, no matter how far the distance, as well as other seminaries in school. Um, Liz is going to touch on this in a little bit, but we're part of something called the Washington Theological Consortium here in um, the DMV area. And basically what that is, it's a group of theological schools who um, all are partnered together in a sense where students can take courses at at each other's um, at each of the institutions um, for the rate of their own seminary while also simultaneously completing the coursework that they have. So basically how that would look is if you were to go to so let's say for instance Howard University School of Divinity or Catholic University, um, don't want to put it too many names out there, but as a Wesley student, you can take an online course with them and meet the requirement for us as well. Um, so it is very helpful in that accomplishing area to um, and I'm overstepping my time, so I'm going to uh, stop now and turn it over to Liz. But in a nutshell, that is why, uh, to echo what Berkeley said, we are moving um, and have been moving to a more online um, way of operation. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elijah and Berkeley, for, um, for all that great information. Uh, so I am going to take you through the nuts and bolts of, um, of navigating Blackboard. So give me one moment while I share my screen share screen and I want to take you through it from the very beginning. So, um, so I have Blackboard uh, bookmarked in whatever web browser you use. So I use, uh, so I use Google Chrome. Um, I intended for it to show you the log page, but I must have logged in recently enough that it just immediately <laughs> opened up to our page. Um, but essentially, you'll just get a Blackboard login credential and then a password. Um, and you'll get those from Berkeley or from Nehemiah after you register. And our login page has sometimes we'll have uh, important announcements. So sometimes, you know, you'll stop there to see like, hey, we're closing the campus and going online or something like that. Yeah, that's really that's really helpful. Um, we I do see the I do see those notices every once in a while on Blackboard. So there's a lot of helpful information on, on every page of Blackboard. So we're right now in my home page. I hope all of you can see this fine. Uh, you can see the congratulations class of 2020 message. There's a tech help portion. Um, the Blackboard student app link is in the bottom corner. And, and then the two sections in the middle are what I pay the most attention to because you can see different announcements. If a professor has announced, uh, has announced anything like a syllabus change, an update on a paper that's due, really anything that a professor would send an announcement for, that'll immediately pop up uh, is the first thing that you see right here under my announcements. Uh, and then the next thing that I go to the most often is my courses. Uh, in my courses, I'll take you through systematic theology because it's, it's right here. Uh, typically the courses that you're taking in a specific semester will be the ones that come up 
the most readily available. So I just took systematic theology. I turned in my last paper um, a week ago. So it's, it's very fresh. Um, and then in Blackboard, in systematic theology, you can see, um, you can see announcements first. So, <laughs> so you can see what Dr. Young emailed all of us a couple weeks ago um, about recorded lectures accidentally being deleted. Uh, but then the really helpful thing to look at on Blackboard is this left hand column right here. Uh, and this is where, and, and you can make, you can close it if you don't want to look at it, you can collapse it or you can expand it. I always keep it expanded. Um, and then you can see the announcements. That's the page on we're right now. Uh, you can see the syllabus, which just takes you directly to a link for the syllabus. Most professors have this, so the syllabus is really easy to find. Um, and all classes have a Blackboard page, regardless of if they're fully online or not. So Blackboard is always going to be a great resource for you to be able to find your syllabus, your professor's email, fellow student emails, if you have a group project you need to work on. Blackboard is always a good resource for you. Um, the really defining characteristic of a Blackboard online class is what you're going to find in the course module section. Um, in all of the online classes I've taken at Wesley, which is uh, two or three, uh, the class has been organized by modules. So in this, you can see module one um, has a title and then it has a bunch of different components. So one of those. Dr. Yeah, Young is one of our online teachers. This class was not an online class, but it was one that had to transition because of the COVID lockdown. But he was already armed with knowing how to teach online, so he just rolled it over into the learning modules, which which was very helpful. I, it sounds like Liz. Yeah, and it, it worked really, really well. Like there was, it didn't feel like there was a lag really between shuffling from in-person classes to online classes. Um, so he would uh, here. Let me take you to. I think the module five should still be in there. So you can see. Um, so it'll take you to a page. It'll take you to a lecture module. It'll take you to a PowerPoint. Um, if you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, a PowerPoint automatically downloads. There are reading resources. That's what John baptizes Jesus, Jordan's faith. Um, all of them are reading resources or links to videos he wants you to watch. And then, and then it always links to the Blackboard page or the discussion board page as well. Um, and in the discussion board, that's where a lot of the class interaction happens with your peers. So the discussion board is a really useful tool in Blackboard for professors to cultivate those peer-to-peer uh, -peer relationships that are so important in seminary. You can just see that in that Dr. Young will post a question, he'll post a description, uh, and then you can see how many people have posted in each of these and the sort of conversations that really get started in a, back, in a Blackboard discussion board. Um, additionally, there's a section on course documents. A lot of professors will post will post um, additional articles that they want you to read or or links to videos, audio clips, podcasts, anything that is uh, not in a book that they would have assigned, they'll post within course documents. Assignments is helpful because all of your assignments are typically posted in the same section. So in this, there's a midterm and the fine. Dr. Young's Systematic Theology is a class that's set up around a midterm, a final, and then discussion board posts. So all of that information is found within the assignment page. Um, the discussion board we just went through. Uh, and, then, um, and then you can also email your, you can email all users in this course, which is professors, teaching assistants, probably Berkeley. Uh, um, uh, and then all of your peers as well. Uh, you can send it to teaching assistants, you can send it to professors. It's, it's a really helpful way for you to be able to navigate any piece of your class that you'll need to right within, right within your Blackboard page. Um, and Blackboard links to your Wesley email. If you choose to forward emails from your Wesley email to a different email, then you'll see them come up in your personal email as well. Um, so, so there's a lot of different things that you can do within Blackboard and it's all set up to um, cultivate really good relationships with your peers and with your professors. Your professors are still just as, if, if not more available in this format. So always feel free to reach out, set up a, a Zoom call, set up an email, um, and you can do all of these things through Blackboard. Uh, and it's, it's, a, it's a very useful procedure. Um, and that is everything I wanted to show you within Blackboard.
Berkeley, what do, what did I miss? What can, um, what so should they know? The only other thing to know is in the online classes, there are two, uh, three pieces that are put in each online class. One is an online orientation, and that's just to kind of show you the, the stuff. It's got our stock wording about things within the institution, and it's got some how-tos. And then we have a navigating Blackboard page, which gives you instructions on the majority of the things teachers might ask of you. And then there is a, a tech support page, which gives you information on how to get tech support, who to contact, um, basics on browsers, uh, like what is a browser, how to install a different browser, things like that. For people who are new to online and a little bit scared, um, we don't have the ability to, to teach you how to use your computer, but if you've got some basic computer knowledge, we want you to be able to take an online course and not feel like, gosh, I have to be a programmer. What, how do I do this? So it's, it, we really try to, to make it uh, kind of accessible and feasible for everybody. Um, one of the components of Blackboard and Kaltura that are, uh, I'd like to highlight is uh, the accessibility. So Kaltura captions all of the videos automatically. So this is really helpful um, for students maybe who have to have a note taker or some of our teachers talk really fast. Um, Denise Hopkins is a fantastic instructor, but she will give you so much information that sometimes it just helps to go back and, and see it in writing as well as hear it. Um, so that's a really great uh, component to the video capture system. And then Blackboard is rated very highly in accessibility as well. So sometimes people have learning disabilities that either are not documented or they just don't really um, want to go through the process with DSS and some of these things just help. Um, different learners, different, uh, different personality types, we really try to kind of make it easy for everybody to find their, find their niche within Blackboard and our online courses. One of the other things that is something we focus on, um, uh, probably if you have talked to Elijah and Liz before, one of our big focuses at Wesley is community. And we do a lot in person. So how do we try to do that online? Well, we use some of the tools that Liz talked about. We use the discussion board. Um, we, some of our teachers uh, have it set up so that the discussion board incorporates video from you guys as well. So that when we are at a distance, you kind of get a feel for each other and each other's personalities and mannerisms. Um, we also, as they both said, try to make sure our teachers are really accessible to you. Um, I drill into them that they need to give you timely feedback and it needs to be uh, detailed so that you know what they need from you and what's expected. Um, so that's, you know, that's part of our, our community is, is the feedback and the instructor interaction with you in the online environment. So I think that's, I think that's it. That's all I wanted to add. So thank you, Liz. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank, and thank you so much for joining this conversation tonight, Berkeley. Um, Absolutely. I feel like we have crashed through that uh, pretty, pretty well. Um, so now I want to open us up to all the questions that you all have for us tonight. There's a, there's a, there's a bunch of you. I hope you have good questions. <laughs> yes, jump right on in. <laughs> I have a um, go ahead. Hey, Kendra. Hey, thank you. How, how um, likely do you think all classes in the fall will be online? Good question. Good question. <laughs> um, so we are um, still in, I guess, consideration about what that will look like. As of right now, all the classes through the summer are um, being offered online entirely. Um, we should hopefully know an answer about the fall by next month, I believe. Um, and then we'll be keeping the communication with all of you about that. Um, in the meantime, you know, if you have any questions about what that may look like, just can, you know, continue to reach out and let us know. And like I said, as soon as we have a definite answer, we'll let you know, but it's, um, we're not sure as of right now, but we are heavily, heavily looking at it. Liz? Yeah. Um, I posted a question. Um, can you go through on Blackboard, navigating hosting discussions. I am not a new student at Wesley. I graduated two years ago with an MA, and now I've decided to come back and finish my MDiv. But with these online classes, I remember that I had some um, difficulty getting hosting of discussions and so forth. 
I might be able to show that faster because I have some sample courses created. Would you that like would me great. to do that? That would be great. Thank you so much. Awesome, I'm show oh, course for a reason, Berkeley. <laughs> Sorry to throw you under the bus there, Liz. <laughs> no, no. I'm glad, I'm glad that you asked. It's an important component to go through. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen then, guys. So what I've got here is a course that um, it's just a sample course that I created. It's a little older. We changed the color on the side from white to purple. But what you would do is you would click into the forum. And then normally you have the ability to create the thread at the top. So you'd click create thread. Now, is that the first step or do you have to read the question first? Well, you'll the... probably want to read the question. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you, well, like an introduction, right? Introduction, yeah, I mean, you know. I, I want you to go from, you know, <laughs> 0 0.1. Let's, <laughs> let's see in a course module. Let's see. So this is a course module. And let me set it so that it looks more like the student view here for you. So in a course module, what we try to do is have all of our professors link the module, link, link their stuff to the module so that you can get to the discussion from the discussion on the side in the course menu or from the module. I love for them to have multiple roads to roam. So when we click on the discussion, normally there'll be their question here. You can click click to launch and that will launch the discussion board. It's mad at me. This is an old one, I'm sorry. So let's assume we went there <laughs> instead okay. of to that error. So you'd read the question here. So let's see, um, ask the instructor. I have a question for my instructor. I'm gonna click on ask the instructor in blue over here. And that takes me here where I can create a thread. Okay. I'm gonna click create thread, but crap, I forgot the question. Well, when I click create thread, the question's there again. So good, oh, okay. okay, so now, I, it has to have a subject. And now, if it's a, if it's a longer question, maybe that um, I need more thought to answer, or I want to go back and make sure I read it correctly, then I have that at the question right above, um, right where it says form description up here. And I'll type in my message here. When I'm ready, I scroll down and I click submit. Now, what I do recommend to everybody, I'm gonna stop sharing. One thing I do recommend is that if it's a longer question, so if it's a question that uh, incorporated the readings, they want you to look at these two readings and then answer this question about you know, a, a, a specific thing in the readings, I recommend you do it in Word first. Um, part because it might time out, Blackboard might time out, and as you're typing, after you typed, two really awesome paragraphs, it times out and you lose it, and that is horrible. I really don't want that for anybody. So type it up in Word. The second reason is because when it's in Word, you can save it on your computer. And if anything goes wrong, you have that. You have that Word timestamps your stuff, right? And it, it gives some info within the file. So if something goes wrong, you think you submitted it, you it didn't get through, something happened, ah, eh, I like Blackboard a lot, I am, the goddess of technology. However, technical problems happen and we completely recognize that. So you might email me and your professor and say, Berkeley, I don't know what happened. My discussion's gone. I'm emailing you the document of the discussion. Can you look at it? I can look at the file properties and I can say, yeah, Evelyn did it on the fourth. It's totally like I can verify as the tech person, I back up her story. And then, and then we've kind of got you covered. But yeah, do it in Word copy it from Word, paste it into that discussion text editor, and then submit it there. And then that's just kind of double coverage. There's one other thing you had emailed me um, about was the synchronous versus asynchronous mm -hmm. component. And synchronous means you meet live, um, usually by Zoom. Asynchronous means there are due dates and you do it just at, at your pace. You don't have online meetings. And Berkeley, can you, uh, do you know if there are any classes that meet synchronous? Because so I know most are asynchronous. The summer, what I've been told are these ones. I'm going to put these in the chat, but it might come up weird. I am told these classes in the chat are all having some synchronous component over the summer. For fall, we don't know. What I have asked is that if we do go online fall, that what I need is for, and what you guys need, 
is to have the ability to know which classes are going to have a synchronous component and which are not. Normally, in online classes, we do not have the synchronous component. We are allowing it a little bit more for um, just the COVID transition. Um, but normally, if you sign up for an online class, uh, it's all asynchronous. And part of the reason is that if you guys are taking an online class, it is probably because you need to for your schedule and that flexibility helps you more. So also, um, we, are, uh, we are able to offer online classes nationwide because we're part of a group called NC Sarah. So we have state reciprocity with all states except California, but I think there's, because um, they haven't joined NC Sarah, but NC Sarah is a group that allows us to, um, comply with a certain set of standards that allows other states to students from other states to take our courses and teachers from other other states to teach our courses so it's kind of um, it's quite a, it's, it's good it's a quality assurance kind of thing so tell us again what the definitions were asynchronous yeah is no course meetings synchronous is course meetings do you know when you know when you will have that information I actually um, was probably going to delay enrollment because of COVID and my I have a kid I have a child who's going to be in kindergarten who we think okay. might have special needs and so I was you, like I can't navigate all that at once. Yeah you're looking for asynchronous then right? Yeah that would be amazing. I understand. Um, I also am taking uh, courses at AU and when we went online we had synchronous and my child could not deal with the fact that I was home and not playing with him so I completely get it. Um, so hopefully, as Elijah said, we're told we, uh, our, our admin council is going to decide next month. And then pretty much as soon as, I, as we get the decision, if it is online, I'm going to be chasing the instructors right away and telling them because there's some things I need to do to make sure it all goes well too. So um, uh, Liz and Elijah, do you know the best way to get info uh, as far as that goes out to folks? Should we post it online or what are your thoughts? Yeah, it'll be posted online as soon as the decision's made. And then additionally, we, Elijah and I, um, and uh, Elijah and I in the Office of Admissions send out a weekly newsletter called Wednesdays with Wesley. Um, mm -hmm. And that'll, that'll be a headline as soon as we know if classes are going to be fully online in the fall. Yeah. And I think all of you get those emails. Um, that all of you, oh, oh, okay. I'm seeing some head shake. Um, <laughs> <laughs> So be on the lookout for our follow-up email. We'll be um, emailing each of you tomorrow. And in that, if you are not signed up for the Wednesdays with Wesley, like Liz said, just click that to sign up and it'll keep you um, updated every Wednesday um, with uh, what's going on at Wesley. Are there any other questions for the group? Otherwise, we can move to a time of prayer and close Hi. out. Oh, I see hands. Hi, Vanessa. Hello, everyone. Thank you for the presentation. It's very helpful. A question, if you are unrolled, I'm unrolled, I would like to take a summer class and further down the road I want to, I decide to enroll can I use that course for my studies in pursuing a, a degree yeah as long as that class um, as long as you take it for credit uh, if you so as long as you take it for one two three credits however many credits the class is um, and you can absolutely transition it into a degree program, but you can only do that for up to nine credits. So in other words, you can take nine credits as a non-degree student, uh, and those nine credits will transfer perfectly seamlessly into a degree program. If you love taking classes, uh, and so you take eight classes and you have 24 credits before you decide to enroll in, in a degree program, first of all, you're already almost at a degree program. <laughs> Uh, second, only nine of those would transition in. So it's always better to enroll in a degree program earlier after you take maybe one, maybe two classes, but definitely do it early. Is there also just to follow up a time limit of when you are taking it as a non-enrolled student versus an enrolled student? Um, I, Elijah, back me up here, but uh, I believe you have seven, you have seven years from the start of your coursework to finish your degree program. Um, I don't, I would have to check with Chip or someone in the registrar to see how long you would, if you took one or two classes the year before, I would have to check 
how long that coursework is relevant unless Berkeley or Elijah know the answer to that. Yeah. Yeah. I would that's say, more of a no um, question, but seven yeah, years had, is usually enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I agree. And we, we've had, uh, you know, several people who have started at Wesley as early as 2011, you know, taking a class here and there and have recently reapplied to us for a degree. Um, and we have accepted those credits. So like Liz said, it's dependent upon, you know, what's still accepted. Usually because it's in-house, um, we always can take it to put it toward a degree program. But as Liz mentioned, you would have to have taken it for credit. Um, if you decide to audit a class, as you know, that, that you know, doesn't give you any credit towards a master's level um, course. Uh, so um, once you do, once you are enrolled in that master's program, like Liz said, anywhere from the minimum time that's, that's in it to seven years from the start date uh, to complete it. Thank you, very helpful. Yeah, thank you. Absolutely, thank you for the question. Well, this has been our most efficient, most wonderful webinar so far. We're, we're getting good at this and we are so delighted that you all joined us tonight. And thank you so much. I, I wanna give a, a muted round of applause to Berkeley for joining <laughs> us tonight. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, and you all have Berkeley's email, um, especially if you're already an enrolled student, feel free to contact Berkeley. If you aren't yet enrolled, then yeah, it probably makes more sense to email me and Elijah first before Berkeley. Uh, but one of the three of us is always here to help you uh, navigate whatever tech and uh, whatever tech or enrollment questions that you might have. So with that, I would like to turn it over to Elijah for a prayer out. Absolutely. All right, will you all join me? Holy Lord, thank you for this evening. Thank you for our minds that are questioning. Um, thank you for clarity and understanding when it comes to uh, the materials that we are using to learn. We thank you for Berkeley and the entire tech team who are making uh, Wesley continue to gr thrive and grow um, technologically in the 21st century. Um, as we navigate the space um, and concerns of COVID-19 and how to run, um, may we just do so led by your Holy Spirit. Um, may we continue to accommodate and be there for our students. Um, and Lord, we just ask that you be present as we go forward this evening and for the rest of our days. Uh, in Jesus' name, we do pray and say thank you, Lord. Amen.